All right, I have the great pleasure of introducing Dr. Barry Sears because I'm a fan. I've been a fan. I've followed, read the book, done the zone, you name it. Um, it is, it's a lifestyle, as you said. Yes. But um, you've gotten, I'm sure, pushed back over the years because this notion that your plate should be 30, 40, 30, 30 percent um, protein, 40 percent carbohydrates, 30 percent fat flips people out. Well, it shouldn't because those are exactly the same new dietary recommendations from the Joslin Diabetes Research Center at Harvard Medical School for the treatment of obesity and type 2 diabetes. And so your studies have proven that choosing the correct fats and eating that much of them actually can help you lose weight. Exactly. Because, again, what makes us fat and keeps us fat is not weakness of will. It's because your fat cells are inflamed. And if you put out the fire in the fat, that's your first step to reversing the obesity epidemic. How do they get inflamed? Well, it turns out uh, what's happened in the last 40 years that we have had radical changes in the U.S. diet. Dramatic increases in vegetable oil consumption, rich in omega-6 fatty acids, and also corresponding increases in refined carbohydrates. And when you add these together, it's like adding kerosene to a fire. You get a fire of inflammation. So explain to people, a refined carbohydrate would be anything that's white white bread white bread white pasta you know these are the things that we, we love to eat they're fun to eat they're inexpensive yet by themselves they're okay but when you combine them with omega-6 fatty acids which, which is are, like olive oil not olive oil but i mean things like soybean oil uh, safflower oil sunflower oil corn oil the cheapest form of carb uh, cheapest form of calories known to mankind these two basically make a deadly combination and so you're saying then the fat cells get inflamed exactly and they sort of stick to you like glue basically what they turn they turn into basically a fat trap now the calories you're consuming get trapped in your fat cells they can't be released you're constantly hungry ask any obese person they'll tell you from the moment they wake up to the moment they go to bed they're constantly consumed by hunger why they have an active fat trap turned on by this inflammation now you sent us some great statistics and and i think one that should blow people away is that 17% of medical costs can be blamed on obesity. That's correct. And that, you're saying that that's through diabetes, heart problems, things like that. That's correct. And that will increase. A recent article came out last week in Lancet saying in 20 years, 50% of American adults will become obese. And what does that 50%. mean? 50%. That means basically we're going to have epidemics of not only heart disease and diabetes, but right behind that, an epidemic of Alzheimer's, which can be viewed as diabetes type 3. Alzheimer's related yes. to obesity. Exactly. I didn't know that. Most Americans don't. Interesting. Okay. 36 uh, states have 25% or more of their population is considered obese. 12 states, 30% or more. Interestingly, though, to your point, they are the poorer states. Exactly. Because there's an economic law called Engel's Law that people will basically, uh, you know, consume more of their disposable income the lower their. Uh, overall income. So we find states which are very pure, are poor, the people are making wise food decisions, economic decisions. That is, how can I get the greatest number of calories with the least number of dollars? What are the two best choices? Refined carbohydrates and cheap vegetable oils. Now, in order to fix this, you basically need to teach people to understand this. Because the notion of 30, 40, 30 it's just confusing, and it's enough to push people away and not bother. You're right, and that's why all you need is one hand and one eye. And here's all the rules you need to follow for a lifetime. Okay. At each meal, divide your plate into three equal sections. Okay. On one-third of the plate, you put some low-fat protein. How much? The amount you can put on the palm of your hand. Notice my palm is bigger than yours. Yeah. I can have more protein. What about the other two-thirds of the plate? You fill it until it's full of colorful carbohydrates. What are those? They're called fruits and vegetables. And finally, you add a dash. What's a dash? A small amount of heart-healthy, monounsaturated fat, low in omega-6 fats. And what you have now is a drug for the next four to six hours will control inflammation, not in your fat cells, but in your body. What are the good fats that you recommend people eat? Well, the best fats basically would be olive oil, nuts, or guacamole. Love guacamole. Uh, who doesn't? Love guacamole. <laughs> now, you have this line of products out to make things easier for people, but basically what you're saying is the book is entitled Toxic Fat because of what you just said. Exactly. It's how basically the two most important or the two major ingredients in our diet are combining to make increased toxic fat, which is turning on inflammation, turning basically our fat cells into fat magnets. 
you have got, I mean, aside from the fact that you have all this research behind your stuff, you kind of have like Hollywood behind you too. Jennifer right. Aniston, a Big Zone fan. I mean, there's many Hollywood people who do this. Has that really helped get it out there? There's no question about that. In Hollywood, uh, if you don't look on screen, you don't stay on screen. Right. So they found this is a program that's easy to follow as long as you have one hand and one eye. And it allows you to keep the weight off because you turn down the inflammation and that's the key toward reduction of body fat. So what do we do? We have an obesity epidemic, as you said. What, what is the solution? Is it just education? I mean, or is it shutting down all the fast food places? No, on the contrary. Uh, basically, it, you know, we basically subsidize the various ingredients that are making us fatter to the tune of $20 billion a year. So what do you do? You stop subsidies for subsidies soybean. Subsidies how? To soybean oil and corn. And all of a sudden, basically... Corn, corn subsidies is what you're saying. Exactly. And so as you drop those subsidies, then the driving force for obesity drops correspondingly. So stop. the government needs to stop sending them money, basically. Exactly. How do you continue to get this out there? And again, I think people are a little overwhelmed. There's a lot of products on the market. Yes. There's a lot of diets on the market. How do you keep it going? Well, basically, education, education, education. And that's why that, you know, I spent a long time because talking about inflammation is difficult, it's complex, but as long as you understand it, say, that's the key. That's the key to a longer, better life. Right now, most people are concerned about, I want to lose the weight now. Yes. So I'll say, easiest way, cut off your left arm. There's 15 Do you pounds. know my brother said that to me? You people must talk. I told him <laughs> I wanted to lose five pounds. He said, cut off your arm. But what you're looking for is a lifestyle. And that's what the word diet means, a lifestyle. A lifestyle for what? To keep inflammation under control for a lifetime. And that will do a couple of things. It'll make you thinner. It'll make you happier. It'll make you healthier and live longer.